Rainy River 2024. It's happening right now. The fish are on the chew. There's a lot of good fishing to be had. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it off to Donnie O'Bert, who's a full-time guide up in that neck of the woods, has a bunch of experience in the river. He's gonna share some tips in this video, but first he's gonna talk about the current, right now, conditions on the river. So current Rainy River conditions, um, we've got we've got some season left here. You still got time to get up here. Uh, the river is four to five feet low and visibility right now is still four or five feet, which is really, really good for April on the Rainy River. These conditions are quite a bit different than what we've had the last few years where the water's been high and fast and dirty. This year it's low and slow and relatively clear. So um, you might want to change up the colors you've been using you know the last few years you might find success with other presentations now without a doubt one of the very first questions you're going to get when you come back from the river is what weight jig were you using so let's address that right now so one of the benefits of being able to fish every single day is that it enables it enables a guy to kind of dial the pattern in and use that information day after day um, the last four or five days We've done really, really well. Um, dragging quarters, if we're just straight jag, dragging, pitching out, going upstream, 0.3 to 0.5. Um, if I mark a big pot of fish, we'll spot lock, and we'll pitch almost perpendicular or even upstream a little bit, and let the current kind of sweep as you're popping your rod tip, and we're doing that with eighths. So dragging, we've done, done best with quarters. Uh, pitching, we've done best with eighths. So, I like to have two rods rigged up so I don't have to retie all the time. If we're if we're dragging and I see a big pot, I'll throw that rod down and grab the other rod, and, and so that way you, you just get to keep fishing. Now that Donnie's touched on what sizes he's been using, he's going to share his top two choices for jigs when you're fishing on the river in spring. Two of my favorite river jigs are the MVP jig by Northland. Um, the thing I love most about this jig is the hook gap. Your hook gap is here to here. And this, this jig works well, even if you want to upsize your plastics, you still have a lot of hook gap there. In fact, that's a, that's a MVP and, a, and an eighth ounce tungsten side by side. And you can see there's quite a bit more hook gap here. Um, one advantage to the tungstens is its slimmer design has less water resistance. So on a year like this with, with not a ton of flow, this, this eighth ounce will probably get down a little faster than this eighth ounce. Just water resistance and pulling into the flow. Another big topic is colors. So now Donnie's gonna share a few of his thoughts on what colors have been hot this year. So with the water clarity being what it is this year, I've leaned real heavy on more naturally colored blades. Um, the Moonlight Glow, the Blueback Shad. There's a couple of gold variations that have been working, working really, really well getting bit. Um, there has been a couple of days where it's been real overcast and cloudy and a lot less sunlight penetrating the water. On those days I'll go with a little more exotic colors, your pinks and your chartreuses. Um, another thing you can do when water clarity um, gets lower, if the river muddies up a little bit or if it's real overcast, is you can go to a, a jig with an underspin on it. So you're getting a little more vibration and flash out of the jig itself. Now Donnie's gonna do a little show and tell. He's gonna demonstrate and explain how he likes to drag jigs and also pitch jigs when he's targeting walleyes on the Rainy River. The two techniques I probably use the most on the river are, are dragging and pitching. Um, pitching, actually let's start with dragging. Uh, so, so typically I wanna start dragging and what dragging is, is it's just a, a 50 foot cast behind the boat. Give yourself one rip of slack. And because the boat is moving, you know, as the boat's moving, it's gonna pull your line tight. And the, the biggest concern river fishing is making sure you're close to the bottom. Um, so a lot of times as I'm dragging, I'll just kind of sweep my rod tip back. You know, if I'm dragging and I'm just holding my rod here, I'll sweep my rod tip back and that slack will just lay on the surface. I know I'm close. Then the speed of the boat will pull that line tight. Um, and that's dragging really. A lot of times the, the less you do, the more you get bit. Let the river do the work. 
And that has been best this year with quarters, dragging upstream 0.3 to 0.5. Uh, now, as far as pitching, so as we're dragging, I'm watching my side imaging and like right now there's a huge pot of fish at 75 feet off the left hand side of the boat. So I'll then spot lock and I'll say, guys, you got fish 75 feet this side. So when we pitch, I'll pop, pop it out there, you know, about the distance the fish are, close my bail. And I'm just letting the river kind of sweep that bait down. And I'll get her tight and just lift and hold. And that river is sweeping that bait down river. Give her a little pop and we're sweeping. Now this year, there is not a ton of flow for the sweeping. So you might have to put a little more action into your, into your baits. But that's an eighth that I pitched out there and the river is hardly moving it. So not a lot of flow this year. But that's it. Uh, dragging upstream 0.3 to 0.5. Mark fish, hit your spot lock and pitch right to them or pitch just upstream of them and sweep your baits down past them. Uh, one of those two. And you'll, you'll, the longer you stay on the river, you know, one pattern might work better than others at certain times of day. Gotta go through it to see which one's putting more fish in the boat. Next up, Donnie's gonna talk about where you should be looking for walleyes this time of year on the river and how to find them. One of the really interesting things about the river is the river is the great equalizer. So what I mean by that is um, you can have guys in 12 foot John boats and guys in big fancy fiberglass boats fishing side by side, cheering each other on, having a good time. You know, the river is a social event. So, you know, don't be afraid to say hi to the guys next to you. You know, there's gonna be boats flying up and down and and uh, just do your thing and fish. Uh, there's, there'll be probably more boats. If you've never been here, there's gonna be more boats than probably you've ever seen in your life. So uh, keep in mind, it's a social event. You know, you gotta get up and down the river, you gotta drive, stay on plane, just go. Uh, if you slow down for every boat you go by, you're never gonna get anywhere. So everyone on the river understands that's, how, that's what river fishing is, especially in April, especially on the rainy river. So if you've never been up here before and you're not sure where to start, you know, maybe you are that guy in the 12 foot John boat and you don't have a graph and, uh, you know, most of the guys that are here been coming here for years. So if you see a long line of boats working a trough or working an area, you know, hop in line and follow them. Do the, do the same thing they're doing. Um, if you do have graphs, you know, and you know how to use them, I usually will start, you know, a little colder in the mornings. I will usually start offshore a little further. I'll look for a trough or a trench, you know, and um, we'll drag up the trench. Again, side image in both sides. Um, and then as the day warms up and the sun, sun beats on that water and it gets a little bit warmer, I found a lot of times those bigger fish, they'll push up um, in the afternoons. And if it seems like I contact more big fish um, as the day warms up and, and into a little bit shallower water. So, um, you know, that's the pattern I've seen uh, kind of play out year in and year out. So. Uh, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to come up here if you've never been up here before. You know it it's it's a magical place. It's uh, man, it draws a lot of people and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's when you come up here year after year after year, you start noticing the same people. You know, so then it really becomes a social event because you see these guys a couple days a year. You know, and everyone's happy to see us. So uh, the river's a pretty special place, man. Now when you're fishing jigs, it pays to have a good rod. Donnie's going to share his go-to jigging rod. All right, so the rod setup I like for the river, uh, the rod setup I use and the one I give to most of my clients is a uh, seven foot one mag medium light by JT Outdoor Products. Um, I like the rod. It's got a little bit slower action. A lot of times with plastics, people set the hook too fast and you feel that thump and you actually rip the bait out of the fish's mouth. So. I like a rod with a little bit slower action. Um, it gives you that, it's kind of built in um, time delay. So it actually lets the fish eat that bait before you 
before you feel it and can react. Um, you get, I find you get a lot more consistent hook sets. Um, it's also got a nice parabolic bend. Uh, it's real forgiving on big head shakes and big runs. So, Next up, Donnie's gonna share his thoughts on line choice when it comes to fishing jigs on the river. The line of choice for me is 10 pound braid um, and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader <clears throat> joined with a uni to uni knot. And uh, my general rule of thumb is I try to match water clarity to leader length. <laughs> And that's just something I've always done. So right now the river is, is three, four feet, five feet of water clarity and three, four foot leaders. So I like those to match up. Uh, I figure if, if my eye can't see it, neither can the walleyes. All right, now real quick, Donnie is gonna share a do and a don't when you're out on the rainy river. We're gonna start off with a do. So one do on the river. I'm gonna give you one do and one do not. Uh, my one do, my mandatory thing to do when you come to the Rainy River is have fun. Uh, it's, it's not a contest. It's, um, it's your first chance typically, you know, in the state of Minnesota to get in the boat and to bring out the long rods. And, uh, man, you know, I like ice fishing, but there's just nothing quite like the first time in the in the boat every spring and, and that first hook set, um, you know, with an open water fishing rod is just, it's just magical to me, especially after ice season. So my do would be to, to have fun, come up here and have fun, bring enough clothes for every kind of weather you can imagine because you're probably gonna fish through it and just have fun, have a good time. High five your buddies. All right, so that's the do. Now here is the don't. I would say do not bring any live bait onto the Canadian side of the river. So, you know, all the fish pictures that I post are 100% with plastics. Um, so, so by only bringing artificials, I'm able to fish both sides of the river. Um, and I know some people don't understand the rules, um, but the one thing I would not do is bring any sort of biological bait onto the Canadian side and also no alcohol onto the Ontario side of the river. So uh, let's let's just have a good time and, uh, and let's keep Johnny Law out of the equation. All right, well that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Donnie for sharing a bunch of great info. I hope you get up to the Rainy River or I guess maybe down to the Rainy River or over the Rainy River depending on where you live. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.